Hey everyone, Shark here. Welcome back to the channel. Got a 2v2 for you today on the map Torrente, which I'm sure you know is a rectangular map characterized by built up areas and lots of CQB play. Uh, playing as the Axis, we have Walrus from the UK. He's ranked number 64 with the Wehrmacht using the Mechanized Battle Group. And his teammate War from the Philippines, ranked number 53 with the DAC, who uses the Battlefield Espionage Battle Group. And then for the Allies, we have Scotch from France, who's the number one ranked UK player using Aaron C. And Janko, his teammate from Poland, ranked number five with the Americans, using the Advanced Infantry Battle Group, aka the Rangers. So this match is super fun, lots of aggressive and, and wonky play, which you'll see. Uh, what really makes it enjoyable for me is I'm joined by both Ares and Turtle War for this cast. The links to their channels are going to be in the description below so you can see their stuff too. As you'd expect with this super high level 2v2, there's lots to learn here, and we really, really enjoyed the post-match discussion. So with that, uh, I hope you enjoy, and we'll roll on to the video. All right. So for this one, we have the uh, the triple cast going on. So I've got uh, Ares and Turtle Boy with me, helping me cover all this. Um, super pumped for this game. We've got uh, Janko, or Yanko, uh, from Poland, playing as the Americans, and kind of the top of the Ares map. Um, he Technically, this is the west side of the map. For some reason, north points down in the default view. This is why all of you guys should just rotate your camera. Um, <laughs> and then we, uh, we got Scotch over here playing as the Brits. This is Torrente. So, Aries, I'll kick this over to you to start, because um, I only have about like a 55% win rate on Torrente, uh, but I don't think you lose games. So what do you think about when you're playing this map? Okay, well, first off, I, I definitely do lose games. Um, <laughs> but on this map, middle fuel is it's key. If you don't own middle fuel, you lose the map. Uh, you'll see a lot of players they'll kind of contest for it early give up and they'll start focusing the star and that's arguably the biggest mistake you could make you used to be able to get around it if you would build a uh, fuel cache of supply trucks on the back as access um it just doesn't work anymore so with scotch not putting pressure on this fuel and allowing them to cap it the dingo is coming but this is a plus 10 fuel that the the access are going to receive that is detrimentally going to hurt the allies even if it's just for a minute yeah uh, interesting, it looks like Walrus has had a little bit of a slow start, right? He's just got an MG42 and a Gren and a Pioneer out. Um, I feel like he's just a little bit behind. With War, you kind of expect the slow start. With the DAC, you know, Panzer Grenadiers are 300 manpower, so it just takes them longer to get into it. But yeah, they're going to hold this fuel for a minute. Yeah, they are. And, um, the territories are connected, the bike can come support. The the Dingo is the biggest threat right now. We do see an MG coming from Scotch, which is great. But with War, I mean, Walrus having his MG down right now, it's it's going to put pressure on that the allies don't need. Yeah. And so I see Janko's already selected advanced infantry. Meanwhile, War is already teching light support company. So this is a difference I've noticed playing team games as opposed to playing ones. If you're war and you're playing 1v1s, two pans are going to do is probably not enough for you. Um, so tech in relatively early, I think, to take advantage of the potential for some tech. Janko smokes the MG42 to help the rifles kind of soft retreat here and rotate over. But that rifle squad's still not going to be able to do a whole lot. Yeah, now we finally have the Brits pushing into mid. I mean, we figure they've held the fuel for about two minutes now so i mean if you just look at the fuel game from the allies of the axis they're already checking and the allies are still tier one yeah and and still now they're racking up this fuel income yeah exactly they're able to hold it um push them off so now neither side is getting it but the axis do have the advantage here yeah and garrett i know you play a lot of brits there's a lot of viability in scaling this dingo into like Humbers and Stewarts, but a lot of that's predicated on having decent fuel control in the early game. Yeah. And the Axis actually are about to cap this right back up. Panzer is yeah. getting burned down by the Vickers. Oh. Dingo's getting chased by the crowd. Oh yeah, and the crowd shoots in micro for war actually cost them a Panzer Pioneer squad to the Vickers. That is where uh, attack map is so key. I cannot reiterate that. <laughs> you know, it's funny. I actually, I was watching a 1v1 uh, earlier today and I could tell that the guy wasn't using the attack map just by the way his infantry were clumping up together. And uh, I know I'm still, still kind of learning, but it makes such a big difference. 
I think it's just it becomes difficult to implement in like threes and fours. Uh, just because the map was so it big. the one v one with um, Dexon against? Uh, I forget the dude's name. He was spamming eight reds. No, I think that was uh, was that Zany who who posted that. that it was, was Zany that yeah. posted that. Yeah. <laughs> Gren stuck functional Wait, game. <laughs> oh my god, they're stuck retreating. Oh no. Well, well, please yeah. fix that grenade. Oh. <laughs> oh, he helped him out. Look at that. <laughs> he says, thank you, bro. Look at that. That's that's some good sportsmanship right there, even though Ranger's already on the field at the four-minute mark. Uh, allies pushing out here through some sheer mass. Uh, uh, I'm interested in seeing what war does here. Right? So, he's only got the two P- Well, the flak filling. Here you go. And the flag filling is a decent counter to the Rangers if you can keep it engaged. And they don't get a million bazookas with their first weapons drop. I, I do want to give uh, props to Walrus where props is due. Um, it, possibly it was accidental. He didn't know Rangers were coming so early. But the fact that he went uh, P-Gun Tech in the city side of this map is a very smart play on his end. It's much more viable than Rebel ones are. Yeah, well, and he gets the navels and the pack 40s for a little bit later on in the game. The pack 40s yeah. can support in the center, and the navels are a great counter to the British on field artillery. War used uh, the little brick walls as a line of sight blocker and stuck the uh, dingo and finished it off. Oh, so I Scotch has lost his dingo. I miss it, but yeah, that's a good pickup. It was, it was a great play. But Scotch has been using the church extremely well. I mean, now that they now that they finally got the fuel, hopefully they'll be able to keep it. I say, as they're on top of it right now. Yeah, the Vickers in there. It's targeting the Grens who are capping the center fuel. But the Vickers, if it focused on the flag filling, would do some damage. And here comes a Humber. So the flag filling's got to be careful. Panzer Grenadiers are close by to provide snare support. This this black truck is done. Oh, it's done. It overcommitted. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah, when you're playing guys like Scotch and Janka, you can't you can't give them away like that. Yeah, I, I do want to say um something on Janka's build, and a lot of players really hurt themselves with this. You'll see the early ranger tech like we did see from Django, mm -hmm. but we do not get the, um, if I can word it, the advanced logistics. Yeah. And I think that's something that should be prioritized with building the first ranger squad is otherwise you're going to kill yourself on that power, just due to bleed. It, that might be why you only see one ranger squad out right now, right? Yeah. And he, and and he tech grenades. So the rifles still have some decent anti-vehicle utility. Oh, the Humber going for these P-Grins. But, because like, I agree with you, that advanced logistics makes large numbers of Rangers really viable, but if you really want the power spike that comes from, oh man, oh. running down that P-Grin squad. Yikes. Um, oh, good use of the merge there to keep that FG-42 firing. And then the Stumble, also a good natural predator for the Rangers. Oh, it's great. Yeah. Combined with the MG42 and the P-Grins. Yeah. These Grenadiers might take some damage, but they're going to be fine. And you've got Janko. And he, he goes the uh, MG. It oh, yeah. Sorry, I think you're a second ahead of me. Um, but yeah, he's going to get away with MG42. Um, well, maybe not. Stumble's going to decrew it here. Yep. Up, oh, yep. Uh, we're getting another flag filling out, and actually we're going to see the espionage battle group for more, so I'm interested in see how he plays this. A second Humber out for Scotch, and also he's locked in, he's locked in the air and sea battle group, he's also just queued up a third Humber. I, uh, I see two Humbers a lot, I, never three. And maybe he's doing this in, in lieu of Stuart tech, right? So he can hunt down the light vehicles. Uh, but obviously, once the heavier vehicles come out, he's just probably going to withdraw and refit. Yeah, exactly. And he knows, you know, that war is uh, using the flak filling. So with three of them, you could easily just rush it. Yeah, now, I don't know. Has he seen the second flak filling? Yeah, okay. So he sees it yeah. now. 
Also, I love the resource cache on the high muni point. Yeah, on these maps, it's... Oh, the crowd goes down to a mine. Nice forward placement there. You gotta respect it. And here come the Humbers. I think they're gonna look for this flak filling and maybe the stumble in the process. Oh, they are hunting. <laughs> oh, man. oh my god. And these uh, two-man Pigran squads gotta be careful. The Humbers would shoot out up too. There goes the flak filling. Snare comes in. <laughs> oh no. Pigran gets annihilated and all the Humbers are gonna get away. Now the Humber's rotating over to deal with the Summel. Yeah, throw this in your notebook, kids. Triple Humber. Ooh, White Boss was oh. Good counter. Man, Walrus just holding it down right now. Yeah, and I, I think you're right, though, Ares. Go back to the advanced logistics point. You, you see Janko not... Oh, there's an AT gun shot, so one of the Humber's is gone. You see no further investment into the Rangers and actually BARs. Oh, that's probably from the Ranger weapons drop. But uh, no additional Rangers. I'm sure he's waiting. Because uh, otherwise, you're right. He will bleed like crazy, especially against this Stumble and the Panther oh, yeah. Rangers dodge the bundle grenade. Am I missing something with the Rangers? I don't see them with Vet 1, but it looked like they were using cover to cover. Here we go. The double Humber is back looking for the Stummel. They throw out the flare, which actually... Oh, this rifle is Yeah. But then again, a third Humber out. Yeah, losing that rifle squad. That's rough. All right, already building a howitzer though for Janko. A fourth, a fourth Humber has hit the field. Oh my gosh! And then, and then, yeah, at the 11 minute mark, an M2A1 howitzer. A victory point is under attack. We must act. You can't argue with it. Indirect on this map, probably a little bit less effective with all the sight blockers and the the shot blockers. Uh, but still, that thing once it gets That's vetted terrible. up. It's, it's deadly, and the Axis are going very team uh, team up and heavy. Yeah. Oh, these pioneers. Oh, the f most... Oh, I thought they were going to get away, taking oh, the troop out through that gate. This is a uh, 8 rad spam, but worse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 8 rad spam with vehicle penetration. Yeah. Uh, meanwhile, you've got the Funk Wagen over on the north side of the map here. We also have a fourth Humber from Scotch. <laughs> this is just Sweet. disgusting. There's a fifth one he has queued up. Oh, well. no. <laughs> <laughs> this is insane. But, okay, Garrett, how much fuel is that? Because I'll be honest with you, I don't know how much a Humber costs. It's, thir there's... it's 30 fuel per Humber, so he's he's lost two, right? He's lost two of them, or one at least? One. So he's lost one. He's lost yeah. one. So six times three, 180 fuel, that's... Uh... <laughs> Man, he could have Grants out by when, now. Yes, but when he hits tier 4, if they're able to control the fuel, um, he'll and be able to spit out some tanks pretty fast. Yeah. Especially if he refits them, um, yeah. Yeah. Oh. oh, man. Here comes Carpet Bomb into. How did... Plus the artillery strike. This is the incendiary Carpet Bomb. Okay. So not I as mean, they, They're floating a lot of Ooh. munitions even still after calling that in. Uh, it knocks oh, the ranger squad health down significantly. Fire. Yeah, <laughs> pun intended, right? Uh, <laughs> MG42 gets knocked down. Here's the stumble to deal with the captain in the house. But here comes the Humber blob, and the Pegrins are actually just not equipped to deal with this. So uh, this is uh, kind of, I always pointed out to you, game-defining moments right here. Um, if Scotch commits to this left side and he wipes out the AT gun and pushes through, Ooh. it's over for the access. But two Humbers already down. Ranger's pushing through. But he still has the uh, capabilities to do it. Yeah. And he's actually pushing, which is good. Uh, Stumble survives the massive Humber push. And actually, a third, three of five, four of five Humbers down. Wow. So, really excellent 
team weapon play and I think oh, one yeah. really good mine here. Uh, and so the Axis player is clawing this one back. War is getting his tier 4 out and they have that center fuel. And the last thing you want is to see uh, multiple Tigers hit the field. That's going to be scary. What, uh, Although, um, right? Mine might be back, but I don't see a battle group from Walrus yet. He hasn't chosen one, yeah. Ooh, that Humber with the incendiary AT rounds, it's going to go down to a fraction of health. Oh Somebody, God. one of these sappers lights a cigarette, that thing's probably done. <laughs> Yeah, I love this, uh, like, kind of mark target ability that the Humber has, and then combine that with the Ranger push. I thought that was a really good move by the Allies, but it did not work out in their favor. They lost a lot in that engagement and didn't really get much in return. Yeah, fair. I, I feel like if they had held their uh, incendiary drop and the artillery drop, um, they could have turned that in their favor instantly. Yeah, get the Axis to commit and throw the incendiary on the backside as they're trying yeah. to retreat. Oh, this MG is done. Yeah, like, they're like, thanks for setting up. Here's a bundle grenade for you. <laughs> Double vet Vickers goes down. And now we got a couple squads of Rangers coming up here. The howitzer just hit vet one, so the uh, charged shell is almost certainly on the way. Um, but Janko building another howitzer, not going for free fire drills, having the, the 155 rapid barrage. It's one of the... Janko, Go ahead. Sorry. Still hasn't gotten uh, advanced logistics, and now we're starting to see more Rangers coming out. So it's going to start bleeding in pretty fast. Yeah. But if you look in his base, he does have a nice little collection of bazookas. Holy <laughs> shit, he does. <laughs> My. I... Uh, maybe I'm... Oh, I see it. They're on the ground. They're just not highlighted. Yeah. Holy cow, that's a lot of bazookas. Yeah, yeah. he could have a five-man Zig squad that'll one-shot that P4 if he upgrades them. Uh, it'll one shot a tiger. <laughs> it won't go that far, but <laughs> it'll it feels like it, and that's the important thing. <laughs> it will if they all penetrate, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's the charge uh, shells debuff on those vehicles. Yeah. I'm starting to see it gain some power. Yeah. And so no free fire drills, but I guarantee you Janko has the micro to manage multiple barrages at the same time. And so I think this map is really built for this artillery heavy play here, just because it's so narrow and there are so few paths. Oh, oh, that's naval artillery. That's good. No, that's the 155. Uh -oh. Never mind. Man. Yep. It does. It does good damage. Last Humber goes down. ISG might survive this. Yeah, it will back up. And the ally is still holding the advantage as far as VP points go. Not necessarily on fuel, but... Significant advantage advantage on KD, but not if you care about vehicles. Shummel takes a shot and backs up. Another bundle grenade. Oh, oh that MG is also dead. ISG hits. Good use of the Panzer Grenadiers. Janko just building a, a third Ranger straight from the barracks now. This might be the vehicle killer. Axe is starting to amount some vehicles, so those bazookas will be really helpful. Oh, absolutely. He hasn't unlocked the Ranger weapons training just yet. I I also want to see him back tech um, into technically it would be tier two. Yeah, with the, the uh, WSC. weapon support center to get the upgrade for the Zooks. Yeah, especially because well he has he has a motor pull out. But if he's primarily playing with artillery and rangers, and he's at 85 pop cap, so he might be yeah. better served. Oh, there you go. <laughs> that is a six-man Zook squad. I'm sorry. Only five. The squad leader's got a Thompson. And he does build a support center. He's cooking. <laughs> yeah. It, I think he's the number five ranked 2v2 player. He might know what he's doing. He's also a fantastic 1v1 player as well. I believe it. Here we go. We got some mines going down in the rear. This is smart. I like this, right? Just in case these uh, Axis vehicles start to overextend, especially pushing on the howitzers, right? There's some support. <clears throat> and then suddenly it got really quiet. 
Both sides kind of resetting. Axis still have control of that center fuel, but the allies at an advantage on uh, VPs. And here you go, you see the improved rockets coming in for Janko now yeah, as well. Yeah, Janko's just being cautious till they show up. And this is something that I totally fail at because I just attack and then I get back to base and heal up and then I attack again. And you can tell the level of coordination here right there. They are thinking about this and they're going to try to choose this engagement when they want it. Oh man. Oh, the stumble. Right, let's go. A race by sprinting <laughs> rangers. <laughs> now, they're going to do no damage at all to these Stoss Troopin. Yep, and they wisely retreat. Meanwhile, Scotch pushing here in the center. Two more Ranger squads sprinting in to try to deal with this MG42. Yeah, the MG42's got to back up. Ooh. 155 Barrage comes in. MG42 gone. This uh, build that Jenko's doing is actually what I did to uh, Tony the other day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, poor Tony. I had a uh, six-man Super Zook squad. It was, it was awesome. I just, I got a message from him saying, I matched up with Ares, and then three minutes later, pull the game's over. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I think the big problem right now is Scotch just doesn't really have, he doesn't have a solid field presence, you know? I mean, he's he's making it work with what he's got, but. And now you see advanced logistics. Yeah, yeah Scott. Really investing into those numbers and not getting them back is, it's hurting him. He lost every single one. Yeah. Meanwhile, the Axis players have recovered very nicely uh, from their kind of early game losses. Look at, like, War's uh, composition here is really nice. Right? It Assault is. Assault Grenadiers, MG, uh, AT guns, ISG. Yeah. Really, yeah. really well balanced. And we're getting a uh, Rumbar from Walrus, too, which I think is a very good play. And good use of the flares to feed the incendiary carpet bombs. Ooh, there goes the Funk Foggin. So, oh, and then the walking Suka counter barrages, and it's just gonna the AT guns move out of the way just in time. The Soul Grenadiers pick up a Thompson from the Humber. Dual AT guns against his P3. Oof. Oh, and it's getting the debuff. Yeah, one more Rusal though. Oh, but the oh. last shot bounces. Wow. Frustrating if you're Scott, but I think that's what sets this game apart from other RTSs. MG34 here suppressing some sappers as they very slowly crawl over a pile of cover. And we get the infantry blob. Oh, I love it. The boys. <laughs> oh, I, I personally would have gone with uh, weapons training, but... This is, this is great, too. This could be so devastating. Look at these guys just running full speed. I actually had used this uh, against Hulk in a 1v1 in a tournament, and these guys won the game. They were in his base because they're most of the match. And they, it's so cheap. Mm -hmm. It is just so much mass that you can't ignore it if it's used properly. I mean, they have three caches on Muni points right now, so yeah, they're they're got quite the economy going. They can afford this. Oh, absolutely. Here's a Brum Bear, but the 155 going off near it, debuffing it, and then they still have to worry about the Super Zook squad. Rangers flank the Sauce Troop, in, but no models drop. We see this Duker coming in on the, uh, actually on the Rangers. That's where you see the power from the five-man super zoo just ripping yeah. that before apart. Yeah, and they're oh, just... Man. Oh, but good use of the smoke. Oh, my gosh. Wow. Attack ground. Bounced. It gets away. Oh. So a couple near misses allow the Axis to maintain uh, their primary vehicles here. And now here's a Matilda for Scotch. I think is probably a decent idea given the team weapon heavy composition here of the allies. Oh, Janko's pushed all the way up, and the allies about to get a triple cap on. Brumbear is rotating over. That P4 is not going to be on the field for a minute. Yeah, Rangers in your rear is not, not good. Yeah. Yeah. 
this push that mg is done that isg is about to get cleared and yeah. gg has been thrown in yeah walrus has called it but no actual surrender Well, here we go. Matilda, less than half health. Half health. P3 is looking for it, but looks the wrong way. Here comes another The Boys push. Oh, there's a right there. <laughs> oh, my God. They just ran right through the smoke. Oh, and there's the surrender. All right. So, normally, I'm going to go through, like, the build order and stuff here, but instead... Uh, Ares is still kind of reviewing the endgame screen and had a couple of points here, so I'm just going to kick it over to him and we'll, we'll start with that. So, this is just something I want to point out. Um, a big rule of thumb that I have is never surrender until the match is actually over, till you are zero on VP. Because I personally have had very many clawback, clawback, you know, clawback games. You've had a couple, one, yeah. <laughs> yeah, with one VP point literally left and my opponent's sitting on 2-300 and I, I end up winning. Um, and I think this is another situation of that <clears throat> where the axe is throwing the towel really early. If you look at the right side of the map, uh, granted, yes, um, war is getting overran, but at the same time, there's a lot on retreat. His biggest problem is the AI blob, which he can just pull back from and he can wait. Walrus has a Brumbar sitting right next to him that was on the way over there that would have massively assisted at that. The Matilda is also on retreat because it's hurt. Mm -hmm. uh, we can easily recrew the AT guns and whatnot, and they're actually both still alive. He has an infantry squad there, and he has a med truck there that can help. So if the Matilda was to come back in, then if we look at the left side on the map, Walrus actually has two beacon squads, completely full health, and a straw squad. What's there to counter him is a scout squad and an engineer squad. The only infantry he can currently field at this moment, if he wanted to, is an AT Zook squad, which doesn't have any anti-infantry fighting capabilities because it's a five-man Zook squad. Yeah. So his actual fighting force is on retreat. This would have allowed Walrus to completely take back the left side of the map if he got aggressive enough. His P4 is getting healed. Um, granted, War would have taken a little bit of a punch, but he could have gotten out of there and realistically saved everything he had because the Brits, there's a Matilda and two AT guns. That's the only thing that's stopping War on the side. And he just has to push some infantry in, followed by his AT guns to push that out. Uh, so I just think it's a good, you know, a good example of somebody throwing in the towel early because you just feel the pressure and not actually sit in there and, you know, methodically think what's going on and how can we turn this around? Because I would have read the situation as they overextended, we're holding them, now is the time we can push back. And I think that would have been the perfect opportunity. And not to mention, Scotch's mainline infantries, he only has two rifles, they're both on retreat, they have to go back and get healed. So there's not really anything stopping, and we don't have any tanks from USF either. Mm -hmm. So I just think it would be, it would have been better had they stayed in, because I really do think they would have had an opportunity to win this. Yeah, I wonder when they watch this if they realize, because when you're in it, right, you feel your losses, but like, yeah, I wonder if if War if he's thinking about like, yeah, okay, so I I lost my Pgrens early, I lost my Panzer Pios. And this last kind of engagement, like a couple team weapons got decrewed, like that sucks. Um, but they killed six Humbers from Scotch. Like Scot uh, Scotch's army composition is not great. Um, granted, you know, mm -hmm. he got the Matilda out and he invested a lot in resource caches. But like you said, at that point, he's got two infantry sections. Uh, he's got a couple of sappers and he's got a Matilda, right? And then you've yeah. got Janko who has, he's pop capped, but he's got three Ranger squads, one of which is just a super Zook. Um, and then no really a ability to build, build tanks at all. So he's completely reliant on artillery. Um, Absolutely. So, yeah, there's there's a way back into this game. And it's interesting because we can see all of it. And it looks still looks like a very even fight with like a, you know, a good joint push by the allies there to kind of at least break the <laughs> break the enemy's will a little bit. But the game's far oh, from over. Yeah. 100% and honestly I mean I'm still tipping my hat towards the Axis I think if they stay in this game with the current comps that the allies have the Axis are going to win I mean the USF player has really put himself on a dead zone where 
in order to get himself out of it, he has to go and blow up his own howitzers <laughs> to counter, say, you know, you have the capability of Panthers coming out from Walrus, Tiger coming out from War. Those artillery guns ain't going to do it. Mm-hmm. So, Garrett, because you, you play a lot of Brits here, and uh, so I'm wondering, like, from Scotch's point of view, if they don't surrender right there, what are you worried about seeing from the DAC, the DAC player specifically from war? I'm worried about a tiger because he, I mean, all he has to fight against that is the two six pounders, which aren't necessary. That's not really a direct counter to a tiger. Mm-hmm. The Matilda isn't going to, it, it could really help as like a sponge, but it's not going to help kill it. Um, yeah. They, they, they really don't have anything on the field to answer a tiger. I mean, unless they somehow got a, you know, a bunch of stickies off and the ranger squad with the Zooks is right there to lay into it or something. But, but even then, yeah, they, I mean, they don't have the weapons training. So there's none of that no. like stun yeah, and debuff. That's true. And, and really the only big way that they'd actually be able to counter a tiger is they'd have to put three AT guns together, the ranger squad, and call in an airstrike on top of that tiger with a rocket loiter. Mm-hmm. The DAC tiger, it, it can just instantly smoke itself and take itself out of the fight. Yeah. And then plus, so, you know, if I'm, if I'm walrus and this starts to go and you realize like, hey, I'm still not seeing tanks from the American player and you know, like what, one Matilda? I'm just getting a second Brumbear. Exactly. Right? Because like, what are you going to do to that Zook squad against two Brumbears? Like, it'll whittle it down. But they're going to take some hits, and then you got the Stoss Troop in, you got the Panzer Grenadiers. Like, you have answers. Mm-hmm. Um, and you're taking some, like, painful losses. But, uh, yeah. It, it's one of those, man, like, it could go either way. Um, yeah, and, and, you know, that's when, like, you play 1v1s and stuff like that, and or even 2v2s with me. I'm like, let's just relax. Let's calm down. Let's rethink what's <laughs> going on. And you do that, and you can just instantly turn the game in your tide. It, turn the game, um, the tide of the game in your favor. Yeah. I So, one thing I, you know, normally I try to go, like, what could they have done differently um, to, to kind of turn the tide here? I don't think the espionage battle group is probably the best choice for war. Um, I don't think he really got to use many of the abilities from it. Uh, if You know, if you want to play really in- infantry heavy, like, it makes sense. Uh, I, I think the the best thing he got out of it were the incendiary rounds on the AT munitions. Um, yeah. But that's one of those like you do kind of handicap yourself uh, because there are no really good like late game abilities. Like you get the firestorm to deny a VP capture, but that's about it. Uh, where it's one of those that, like I think with Dak, if you're not sure what to do, go armored because at least you get the loiter and you get upgrades. Oh, especially off your on this map and yeah. fighting a Brit. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> loiter's the answer. Or or Guasatori, and then you get that uh, the mm-hmm. Obicha call-in barrage, and so you get sight on one of those howitzers, um, and then you know, all right, that's a howitzer deleted, right? So uh, there there's still some options there uh, for Walrus. I I think we kind of agree he had it right. I don't see what he does necessarily differently. The the Stummel and the Panzergrens. Um, yeah, he had a good build. Yeah, that. I feel like that's the answer. Janko knew what he was doing, like very clearly. Um, so pretty cool. I like the idea of. So I personally, uh, the way I like to play Rangers is I keep the Zooks kind of balanced across them, um, because I'm trying to not have a specialty squad, right? Like I want them to all kind of be consistent, and I spread them across the map. Uh, but yeah, if you if you know you've got your one anti tank Ranger squad, that's that's pretty effective. Especially yeah, them. so that's where go, go I agree it. with Jenko. <laughs> is um, when I play Rangers, I'll usually keep two to three dedicated anti-infantry squads. I mean, I most of the time won't even throw on the bars of the LMGs, only the <laughs> flamethrowers, <laughs> uh, because the Thompsons just do really good. And then I'll walk around with one to two here. May I might throw a flamethrower on them just for a little bit of leeway if they need to do something. Um, but minimum four zooks on two squads and those are my dedicated squads that way you know i can hotkey them to say number two Mm -hmm. and i can just tell them to do what i want to do and that way i can focus on this is my anti-tank and this is my infantry versus having it spread out because then you're you're crippling yourself actually fighting infantry squads when it's a one-on-one say you know you have a ranger squad with two two zooks on it right Mm -hmm. and you have no other upgrades and you come across the pgren squad the pgren squad's winning yeah yeah no you're right um Differences, especially playing like 1v1 and 2v2. Um, and on this map, because it is so narrow and there are so many like building site blockers, you don't like 
God, if I got dropped in 1919 on this map, I don't think I'd pick it up at all or give it to the scouts or something, <laughs> right? Like, it's just <laughs> no value added uh, on this map. And then for Scotch. All right, so Garrett, talk to me about the six Humber strategy. <laughs> yeah, that's an <laughs> odd one. I've never seen that before. But, I mean, I, I think I see the vision now, especially after talking with you guys. I mean, you control the middle game. You you dominate. You just ro ro roll around with those, you know, tear it up. And, you know, I think I think we we realized what he wanted to do is refund all of them, but he just, they're, they're so soft. He hit a couple mines, those AT guns lined him up. And, and that one, uh, that one dive, he lost what, five of them. Yeah. yeah. It's so, just unfortunate. Question for you, Gary, would you rather have had him seen, uh, if he, you know, did the spam, would you rather seen Stuart spam since they're chunkier? They can auto repair. I, I think, yeah, if you're, if you're going to commit to that, you might want to do, uh, the Stuarts, since they got a little bit more health to him, I think that that dive, if he does that with four Stuarts, they probably yeah. he probably still loses one or two. But yeah. I mean, and they're relatively the same cost too. Yeah, I, my only counter is the timing of it, right? So if you're not expecting five Humbers, five Humbers show up and like, maybe what do you have on the field? Like a Panzer Jaeger squad, right? <laughs> and you, oh, my infantry have snares. Cool. Like you, so, both Panzer Grenadier squad just got deleted. By those humbers oh, yeah. um and so i think that's the advantage like if you if you aren't ready for it those things are overwhelming but by the time the second push came through with all five there were teller mines down yeah. there were a couple at guns and like these guys are not slouches so they're gonna figure out how to use the at guns to to do work um i think yeah. he also i i i um i don't know about you aries or you shark what you guys feel about this but when you make dives like that, I always try to not like he dove on the what where I'm looking on the left side, you know, mm -hmm. and when he pulled out, he pulled out to the middle, which yeah. opened his units up to a whole nother flank. Mm -hmm. Like I, I, I think you really when you dive like that, you got to pull back to an area you I mean, you, you don't know it's safe, but I, I think See, you could you could assume it, it's a lot safer on the other side. I think what he was wanting to do, and this is kind of like I had mentioned it in the game. I was like, hey, if he pushes right now and he does it right, this is like a game ending moment for the mm -hmm. access. Mm -hmm. Like that's something I would have surrendered on if they pulled it off. He um he should have laid down a smoke screen to block off war from actually helping and just obliterate walrus. And then he could have left or transitioned over to war once he got some line of sight to actually see what was waiting for him, which were the AT guns. And that was great position repositioning from war like i'm gonna stop this i'm gonna counter this so i mean yeah gary you're absolutely right he should have gone the other way um i think he wanted to kind of route what i was saying it just wasn't implemented correctly yeah and the, and the big difference is unlike the stewards right the smoke from the humber you have to launch somewhere and it takes time to come in it's not a smoke on the vehicle and so yeah. the, the strategy is just slightly less viable because of one the additional micro and then the delay in the smokes landing um the the one thing i will say about this game that i really appreciated um i cast about half of my games are guys in like the top 10 top 20 right in 1v1s and so you see a lot of like really flawless play from a micro perspective uh guys that aren't making many mistakes that are aggressive when they should be aggressive that are, but that are cautious and passive and really good at unit preservation so man it was really fun to see like guys throw stuff into the meat grinder <laughs> <laughs> like it was just exciting was. <laughs> and uh and then to, to see him bounce back from it too uh i was really impressed um war especially was off on the back foot for a long time and then you look at his army composition you know was it 15 20 minutes into the game and he's got everything right he's got a machine gun he's got two at guns he's got an isg he's got assault grants he's got pyos he's got a p3 a walking stuka like if you were going to build an army from scratch, not knowing what your opponent had, that's what you would build, right? And so, oh yeah, so really impressive that they're able to work back from that. Um, Aries, you got anything else? No, I, I think that's about it. I just I want to give props to Walrus and War for hanging in there with the big boys and oh, yeah. actually giving them some pain. And guys, if you would have held out, I really would have put my money on you guys to win, just based off their army comps. I the late game goes to you guys hands down yeah uh agree there garrett what do you got man uh i mean i i agree i i think i suffer from the same uh same affliction though sometimes you just you're in the match you don't really know like you're feeling that pressure and you don't know what else is coming 
and you just are like, I give up. And you know, we've been there. I I'm a I I suffer from it a lot. But uh, yeah, this match has definitely made me think I should uh, take my time and be a little bit more patient with these matches. Yeah. Well, gents, thanks for sitting down and casting this one with me. This was a lot of fun. Uh, of thanks, guys, for sending it in. Uh, that's all from us here, and we'll see y'all in the next one.